Big old bell. Big old bell. Big old bell. I've been on this project for quite a while, so I have known how good it is, how exciting it is. I think the fans are going to lose their minds. There's some very mind-blowing stuff in there. And it's been so fun, but also really hard to keep a secret like that. So it's terrifying. Um, but you are sworn, I am sworn to Marvel NDA prison. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I cannot open my mouth. Unless your name's um, Tom Hall. Uh, well, yeah, apparently so. But yeah, like I can... I'm like, I got, she's green and she's a lawyer. That's, that's what I can tell you. Um, but no, excitement wise, it's so awesome. And just seeing like, you know, when the trailer came out that it got 78 million views in 24 hours, just was mind blowing. I found, someone sent it to me about 45 minutes after it came out and it already had like three or four million views. So just realizing this thing that we've been working on that's been in my computer in my own little world for a while is actually going to be out in the world is like, terrifying but also really exciting and like I think it's gonna it's a really really fun show it's just so fun it's so funny but there's some like really really great storytelling in there um, and I think everyone's gonna really enjoy it it's, it's a good show congratulations thank you how did I land again? I funnily enough I actually sent a reel for another Marvel project I was put up and my agent reached out and um, there was a film that we were interested in and I sent over a reel for that which I didn't get but someone on the someone at Marvel heard the reel and thought oh wait hang on this reel might be good for She-Hulk so they sent over the reel to the She-Hulk people and then I had a meeting um, I had met Kat Coiro who's the director of uh, I think six of the episodes um, I had met her a couple of years ago on another project um, so it was kind of this weird we, we knew each other already but hadn't connected in a few years so um, got on Zoom because it was pretty in heavy in the middle of COVID at the time and met the team um, and just pitched them my ideas for the score I had read I think I read a script or two they sent me a script or two and I had seen some visual stuff um, to just get an idea of what it would look like and just pitched them my ideas and we talked about it and um, yeah I, I had obviously there's like the Marvel Universe sound that is always there but it's like how do you make this show unique and give it its own kind of sound and add to that um, and contribute something new to the universe you know um, so I had pitched you know a lot of modern music to them I think there was a lot of like Billie Eilish and I had pulled together like some Billie Eilish tracks and uh, Olivia Rodrigo and just mashed them together with orchestral music just to you know be like obviously this sounds awful mashed together but it's like wouldn't it be cool if we made like a modern score like modern pop score with an orchestra as well and, and just combining the, and finding the palette of it um, and yeah that's what we got the game so oh yeah there's always temps uh, yeah it can be I some composers hate temp and like prefer to watch the project without temp altogether I find the temp can be very um, informative because you know the, the hard part is when there's temp love and they love the temp so much that you can never beat it but um, I find the temp is a, it's a great way to discuss music it's a great especially like a lot of times when you're working with showrunners or directors often they're not musical so they don't you know are, are not able to speak in musical terms but when you have a temp you can point to a sound that you like and say I love this I hate this this sounds too happy this is too sad whatever um, so yeah there's temp in every project uh, on a Marvel project it's it's quite fun because obviously there's a lot of it's there's so much Marvel music in the world that there they have so much to pull from so it can be a bit daunting at times when there's like a huge amazing theme that you've known since you were like 15 temped in there and you think well how am I going to beat this like there's you know how can I score the scene this music is so perfect I can't you know how am I going to do that um but slowly but surely you know it the way I like to go with it is um find some big key scenes and really work on those and establish the sound establish the palette and once those kind of big thematic areas are in and everyone's kind of familiar gets familiar with them the rest just falls into place for the most part all right so because the only thing you're able to say is that she's green and she's a lawyer 
<laughs> I promise I'm not, I'm not trying to pull information out of you. We we watch it around for more 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 projects. No, but with the lawyer aspect of it, when you think about lawyers and television shows, movie yeah. series, and all those very prominent ones, they always got prominent sounds, melodies, and songs attached to it. Was that an approach that you took with this? To engrave your imprint, engrave your name, and cement your name into the legacy of the most popular lawyer show <laughs> out there and the melodies with it? It's a thing. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And when I got this show, I sat and like watched random episodes of like little drums. I watched some like Suits. Oh yeah. Like I watched Ali McBeal. Like, yeah. I went back to the nineties. That was nineties, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, it was just like. What is the sound of legal drama that we all like? You know, and then I realized there's there's different. It's it's kind of a wide range because there's like the Good Boys has its own sound, which is an amazing score. That's like that chamber orchestra sound, and then there's the more kind of um, Rhodes and Whirly kind of bandy score of the '90s. So it's been really fun to play around with what I think and I hope the audience connect in their head as a legal drama and to kind of bring that into the Marvel Universe and combine it with that with that established kind of yeah. Marvel sound. But it's it's really fun. Oh, I can't wait. How does it work? Because, I mean, this is essentially a TV show, but it's not made like a TV show. Mm -hmm. And it's not a film, but it has a lot of, a lot of other films. So, uh, I know that the time uh, lapse in, in, in the production of regular TV series is like uh, very quick. Uh, or two. How is it, how does it work here on Marvel on this kind of series? Right. Um, it's basically like nine mini movies. That's the way I think about them, you know? Um, the process is that in the beginning when I came in I wrote a suite of music to kind of establish the themes that I thought we would use um, throughout the series and just the, just to give everyone an idea of here's the palette of what I'm thinking will work and we worked back and forth on that for quite a while and then the editors were able to start taking that and yeah, using it as temp which which started which was very helpful because it, it got everyone familiar with the sound um, so yeah then we would spot the episode which is where everyone gets together and you watch through and you discuss your music come in here go out there what should it do how are we using music in this scene what's the subtext to this scene that the music can actually help tell the story with and not sometimes it's not just scoring what's happening on screen sometimes you're scoring something overarching you know a, a kind of overarching storyline and how are you helping to keep push the the show forward and then i'll go away and write the score and then a couple of weeks later i'll send it up for review and then there's a couple of uh, uh, passes of notes back and forth once it's all approved then we it goes to the orchestrator ellie coming who's here with me today and um she orchestrates the whole score and we get it all set up for um vienna which is where we record the um orchestra the orchestral parts of the score um in vienna and then any soloists who would record you know we'll set it up and have them record then it goes to comes back goes through all the music editors and then uh, to the mixer and then I'll sit with the mixer <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah I sit with the mixer and then we deliver it to the dub stage but it's it's a long process per episode there's usually two or three going at the same time yeah all right so I guess for the final question to bring it all home um, we have focus on, and I know this is a superhero uh, theme press room, but could you talk maybe about other projects you may be uh, working on right now? Um, yeah, because we don't want you in trouble. <laughs> no. um, I'm just starting a show right now on Netflix called Blue Eye Samurai, which is a um, adult animation show. It's stunning. It's so beautiful. Um, and it's really, really, really fun. Again, leaning into kind of um, Japanese instruments and kind of creating that kind of sound of that their own show. And that, that's the it's the hardest part of the job, but it's the part I love, which is where you just feel like you're never going to get it, and then one day it just snaps, and then it all suddenly appears and is and exists in real life. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm working on. Awesome. After this. That's why you're an artist. You make it happen. Thank you. I love your shirt, by the way. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate very it. Very colorful. Well, I hope you have a good rest of your San Diego Comic Con and you. wherever you walk throughout Gasland. You're going to see. I should go and see it. I haven't seen it because I got in late last night. I haven't. Oh, really? In the Gasland thing? All, all over the place. Oh, I gotta go check it out. Hey. Thank you, guys. Oh, your name tag. No, you're eight. You don't want to lose that. <laughs> Thank you. It's a trophy.